every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus, the Christ, the Lord, is my Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He is risen from the dead. He's my Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. He's my Lord. Hallelujah. He is my Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is my Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus, the Christ, Day. Thank you, Lord, for last night's rest and awaken us this morning refreshed. We ask you again, Holy Father, to let us be with you. Show us your ways. Teach us, and we will hear. Open our hearts, we will receive. Touch us, and we will change. We ask you, Holy Father, to have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sin. All as your children, protect us. As your servants, lead us and guide us in your way everlasting. We know we're well guided. Thank you, Father, for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Holy Father, for all the wonderful things you've done for us, particularly the beginning of this year. Thank you, Lord, for what you did for us on yesterday. Bless the King of kings. Bless the Lord of lords. Bless the ancient of days. We give you glory for yet another day. Praise and magnify your Holy Father because you're worthy to be praised. Unchangeable change. We bless your name, Jehovah, because you remain the same. And we can put the whole of our trust in you. We give you praise, Holy Father, for the barren that became fruit. Thank you, Lord, that you still have a hand in the affairs of men. And we ask you, Holy Father, to have your perfect sway. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I want you to pray tonight, personal prayer points. I'm not sure what it's from. Amen. But they are entitled personal prayer points. So if you have these prayers, members of our church, the red book, you look in the table of contents, you will find personal prayer points. Oh Lord, I put myself in your hands. I promise to do what you want me to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I will make the decisions you want me to make. Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter, make what you want out of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take me, Lord, and give me whatever shape you want. 
If you want, oh Lord, break the clay of my life to pieces and start all over again. Lord, do with me whatever you want in my life. Let it be done according to your will in my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be done according to your word in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let divine patience settle in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every power asking for my head on a charger, fall down and die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power that killed Haman in place of Mordecai, that those who hate my existence be disgraced and die the death. They designed for me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Agents of sorrow pursuing me, scatter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Terminators of my father's house, die now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satanic sacrifices made for my sake be rendered evident in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You circle of confusion. Be broken and be destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, city of confusion in my life, be destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My hands be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My feet be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the root of all sickness in our lives with the blood of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever my spirit has been locked up, break loose by fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not fail as salt of the earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fire of God, roast all witchcraft bags holding my finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You evil blood sucking powers, suck yourselves into oblivion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I dismount every blockage in the dream in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every satanic bank manager die in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I terminate the appointment of the spirit of backwardness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit of spiritual slumber, get out of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every wall of Jericho erected against my success Fall down to the ground in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pharaoh of backwardness, I bury you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every unrighteous swearing of my ancestors be canceled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every dark hand in my foundation fighting my destiny wither in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything stolen from my destiny in the womb I recover you now by fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a power waiting for my day of honor to disgrace me. You die in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every power promoting captivity in my life, die now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, visit me with unusual surprises in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O thou that from the Israel of Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church, the God of Elijah shall trouble you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every enemy of the Lord's church scattered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O God, arise and uproot anything you did not plan inside Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the fire of revival Fall upon Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Want to pray now? 30 days of prayer. Continue to pray them because the pandemic is not over. There are still our brothers and sisters who are being attacked and come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to pray day number 20. You're just joining us. We're the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church in Beaumont, Texas. And we began every worship with prayer. Our Lord Jesus said, My house should be called in the house 
of prayer. And I understand what that means that praying ought to go on in his house. And we elect for it to be the first thing we do in the Lord's church. Praying day number 20 of the 30 days of prayer against the pandemic. Oh Lord, cause it to happen that the failure of the devil should advance in your church. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father, make the spiritual life of every member of your church to be too hot for the enemy to handle. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father, let the angel of God hinder and stop all the works of darkness in your church. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We barricade our bodies from every invasion of disease germs. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost fire. Boil every infirmity out of our systems. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yokes of infirmity. Break to pieces and be destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Breakthrough robbers, destiny robbers, and progress robbers, die now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, arise and give us the power to ridicule our enemies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anointing that dumbfounds the enemy, fall upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Power to scatter dark hiding places. Fall upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dark powers that have chosen our date of death and burial. Die now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will live and not die and publish the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every effort of witchcraft and wickedness over our lives. Die now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Covenant of sorrow. Covenant of tragedy. Be broken and destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Demonic forest. Demonic mountain and demonic river troubling our destinies. Dry up. Catch fire and burn the ashes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Star killers. Glory killers. Your time is up. Die now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O thunder of God. Rise and break and destroy every pot of affliction. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Agenda of corrupt leaders for our land. Be nullified with the blood of our Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You dark stronghold in charge of sickness and disease in our land. Fall down and die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We use the blood of our Lord Jesus to sanitize our land and cleanse it from every which sponsored sickness and disease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you dragon power behind this pestilence, we bury you forever by the power and the blood of our Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, strong man behind this pandemic, we bind and cast you out of our nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful Savior. Spirit. the living God fall fresh fall fresh on me walk in the light it's a beautiful light Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Turn with me your Bible to John 13, 34 and 35. John 13, 34 and 35. Matthew 28. 
19 and 20. We will walk. Walk in the light. It's a beautiful light. feet, a light to our path. We do not stumble. We do not lose our way. You taught us that when we continue in your word, we show ourselves to be your disciples indeed, and that we will know the truth. And that truth that we know will make us free. So we thank you right now, Holy Father, for the freedom we receive from your word. Thank you, Father. Your anointing is upon your word, and your word falls on and on and it is. We hear so as to receive. Bless of us, O Holy Father. Less of us and more of you. Less of us, O Holy Father, so that's none of us and all of you. 
not unto us, but unto your name, give glory, majesty, dominion, and power. It's our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Get our lesson tonight at John chapter number 13, verses 34 and 35. And our companion text is Matthew 28, 19, and 20. They taught us in school that you shouldn't have more than one text, but they didn't call me and preach. Hallelujah. And these two will support our subject and the lesson tonight. We want to talk on this subject, love, the great commandment and the great commission. Love, the great commandment and the great commission. So it's a long subject, but I believe if you get it down in your spirit, it'll bless you. Love, the great commandment and the great commission. John 13, 34, and 35 reads this way. This is Jesus talking. And if you have a red letter edition Bible, at least for the New Testament, you will see these words in red, which indicate they are the words of our Lord Jesus. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. In Matthew 28, 19, and 20, this is the great commission, which does not differ from the great commandment. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, the subject tonight is love, the great commandment, and the great commission that Jesus emphatically says that he expects us to love one another as he has loved us that is a job that will require a great deal of effort if I remember the words of our Lord Jesus when he spoke it to me ask me a question can I trust you to love my people as I do. And that was six o'clock in the evening that day in my prayer room and I could not answer that question because I really don't know, especially at that point, how God loves us, how Jesus loves us and the measure in which he does. Three hours later, he told me how to answer the question. And I said, yes, I will if you teach me. Then three hours later, he said, I will. That was a lot of years ago. And I've been learning in my walk with the Lord how to love God's people. I'm grateful to God that he fixed me where I can love people. And I'm not alone in it. I'm not special. If you walk with the Lord, you will learn to love people. Because when you really consider how he loves us, it's a little thing in return that he asks us to love one another. And love is still an action verb. We want to make it a noun where we can possess it and control it at will. And that is a mistake. And too many people make in relationships. And there's this foolishness that older people tell younger people, make sure she loves you more than you love her. And then they'll tell her, make sure he loves you more than you love him. And when they set out in marriage or in just simple relationship, it's never going to work 
because no one is free to love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Love is not a noun. That's not what Jesus is talking about here. He's not talking about having something for one another. He's talking about doing it. Hallelujah. That again, I say that love is an action verb. An old adage still rings true. A bell is not a bell till you ring it. Song is not a song until you sing it. Love is not in your heart to stay. Love is not love until you give it away. And it's unfortunate that too many are taught to disregard that love, to make sure that somebody else in the relationship loves you more. Well, that's going to be difficult if you're going to love at all because love in itself is unmeasurable. And to try to hold it back, to try to put it in a bag, put it in a basket, put it in a something that you keep a cap on, you're going to have issues because that's not how love works. Here's the truth. Others will not care for how much we know until they know how much we care. That the world, those that are lost without the Christ, they, they don't care very much about what we have to say. But they have a sharp eye for who we are. That everybody wants to be loved. Even folk who are haters want to be loved. But please know that who we are shines much brighter than the words we say. That our study tonight is the great commandment and the great commission. The night before Jesus was betrayed, John 15, 12 through 17, go there. John 15, 12 through 17. This is the night before he was betrayed. He said, this is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And then he goes on to say, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. What has he commanded us to do? To love one another. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord does. But I called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, here it is again, that you love one another. And the next afternoon, he died on a Roman cross. But shortly after his resurrection, Jesus gave his disciples another command. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. I'm going to read it again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, or unto the end of the age. Amen. But here's another rendition, another writing from Mark on what Jesus said. And I want you to listen to this. Mark 16, verses 14 through 18. And when you look at the harmony of the gospel, that simply means comparing the four gospels with each other. They don't all four talk about the same things, but in some instances they do or will refer to it. Amen. Verse 14, Mark 16, 14 through the 18th verse. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Now, this is after the resurrection. And he upbraided them with their unbelief and the hardness of heart. <clears throat> because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. That was an issue. Since because the Lord Jesus had told his disciples that he would rise again. 
they were there when he said as Jonah was in the heart of the, of the, in the belly of the whale for three days and the three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, but I will rise again. He was the one, they were there when he said, <clears throat> no man take my life. I lay my life down, and if I lay it down, I can pick it up again. Yet when those who saw Jesus after the resurrection, the disciples doubted. <clears throat> We talk about doubting Thomas. He was not. He was. He was not the only one who doubted the resurrection, and that's what Jesus is upbraiding them about here. Look at verse fifteen, and he said unto them, "Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe." In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Here are the questions. Here are the questions in response to the great commission, the great commandment and the great commission. Do we love enough? To teach all nations. To preach the gospel to every creature. Or do we just choose who we will witness to? Do we love enough to baptize all nations? Do we love enough to believe? <laughs> See, your believing is as, is as important to you as it is to me. Because this love thing is a heart matter. It's a spiritual matter. And again, do we love enough to believe? Do we love enough? Here comes the harder question. Do we love enough to cast out devils? I read the Bible and this is what it says about fear. It says love casts out fear. And if we love enough, we will cast the devils out. Hallelujah. Do we love enough to speak with new tongues? <laughs> now, I'm talking about do we love the Lord enough and love one another enough? Hallelujah. Do we love enough to fight the good fight of faith and overcoming serpents and scorpions and resisting the poison of venom that the enemy tries to screw on us? Do we love enough to lay hands on the sick and they be recovered. Let me say this right quick. I, since the Lord spoke to me years ago, <clears throat> I'm not afraid to lay hands on the sick. And the reason too many won't lay hands on the sick is because they're afraid that nothing will happen. Well, here's the truth of the matter. We didn't promise anything. When I lay hands on the sick, I lay hands in obedience to the great head of the church who said they shall recover. I haven't promised anybody anything. There are those who try to go and investigate healings and say that <clears throat> that person got healed, but they got sick again. Well, <clears throat> here's the truth. If you go back to doing what you were doing that produced that sickness, yeah, you can get sick again. And this is what we teach in this ministry that you need to protect your healing. Hallelujah. My personal ethic, anything that makes me sick, I'm a sick head. Simply meaning anything that makes me feel bad, I ain't eating it no more. That just makes sense to me. Help us, Lord Jesus. But by obeying the Lord's great commandment, that is to love, and obeying his great commission to make disciples, the early church changed the whole world. They simply obeyed God. They obeyed what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Some of them, yes, he had to work on them. We understand that. Hallelujah. All of us are working in progress. Amen? We're not all that we ought to be because we're still here. Hallelujah. But these primitive disciples, they weren't super people. 
and 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 that's an issue in a large church that does not even belong. They were not super people. They were simple people just like you and me who chose to obey God, to obey the Lord Jesus, to love one another, and keep his commandments. That beloved, they didn't see the, the, the great commandment and the great commission as two separate commands. They saw it one as a continuation of the other. They saw the great commission as a continuation of the great commandment. They was like two sides to one coin for as they were concerned. Hallelujah. But both the commandments require us to love one another. So what should be our motivation? We ought to be motivated by God's love for us. John 15 again, 15, 9 through 14. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You're my friends. If you do, whatsoever I command you. John 17, 18. Again, the motivation is God's love for us. John 17, 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. John 20, 21. John 20, 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. That our Lord Jesus became the example of love, showing us how to love. And then he shows us how and he shows us how to obey. He obeyed his Father. Came to the world. You know, decision made before the foundation of the world. We understand all that, praise the Lord. But understand our motivation for loving one another, our motivation for loving and reaching out to the world is God's love for us. Hallelujah. And the message is simple. It's God's love for the world. John 3, 16. My late father called it the golden text of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What is the method? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our love to those around us. Very simple. Very simple. Our motivation is God's love to us. The message, God loves the world. And the method is to love those folk that we see. Hallelujah. I'm one of those guys, everybody start out with a hundred with me. I'm, 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 I'm not suspicious of people. And I, I'm not saying, look, listen to me, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not criticizing anybody that's suspicious of everybody. I, I'm, I'm not criticizing you. See, because even in your distrust, you can love. Because the truth of the matter, love ain't trust. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. Love is not trust. You, you, you can love somebody and not trust them because when you know, Maya Angelou was correct, she said, when people show you who they are, believe them. And you can still love them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The method is our love to one another. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. 1 Corinthians 13 1. It's going to be our last, verse, our last scripture. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or have not love, I am become as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Very simple. Very simple. If you speak in tongues and have not love, you're just a noise maker. Help me, Lord Jesus. And some want to promote faith over love. 
perhaps because that's what they were taught. And I understand them, the teacher, who ever taught that. But that ain't what the Bible said. Got three everlastings in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. Now by death, faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these, meaning the greatest of those three, is love. How is it, beloved, that those who went on before us, they may not have been able to understand the word of God as you do or as I do, yet they had an anointing on their lives that people try to imitate today. <laughs> they had a relationship with God. Again, I say, they weren't religious. They had a relationship with God. And that they had a love for people. See, I remember the time that all black folk had enough of was love. Hallelujah. I remember that day. Well, that's all black folk had enough of was love. That I remember as a boy, I, my first job was churning clab of milk to make butter. And I put it in the form and wrap it in wax paper and deliver it to the people, deliver it to the neighbors, not sell it, <laughs> deliver it. They'd go to the store and they'd buy more than what they needed just to share with those who were less fortunate. That was love. My definition tonight for love, intentionally doing something caring or helpful for another person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ regardless of the cost or the consequence to oneself. To be sure, it takes a little more to love some <laughs> than it does to love others. Some are easy to love. Some others, not so much. But loving is intentionally doing something caring or helpful for another person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of the cost or consequence to oneself. G.W. Harris wrote a song years ago, he said, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. I want to walk in the newness of life. So let me be a follower of Christ. I want to be a fisherman of men now for Christ. I want to bring other souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to help rid this world of its strife. Just let me be a follower of Christ. What do I have to do? What do I have to say? How do I have to walk? each and every day. Tell me what does it cost just to carry the cross. So let me be a follower of Christ. Follow Christ is very simple. Love one another as I have loved you. Antiquity teaches us this is secular history apart from the Bible that after John the beloved disciple returned from Patmos that he was at the church of Ephesus old and grave and at the end of every service they would ask him father you have anything to say to us and he would this is written that he would say love one another and one little youngster just said well father that's what you always say <laughs> he said if you do it it'll be enough Hallelujah. That we just love one another. That's the great commandment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it coincides with the great commission. We can't do what God told us to do until we first love one another. Our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for teaching us to love one another. We give you praise, we give you glory for 
your mercy and your grace that teaches us to love one another. Oh God, touch our hearts and make us to love like you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray with thanksgiving. All agree with that prayer. Say it, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you for being with us tonight. You're on Facebook and our blood members on the parking lot and on Google Meet. Thank you for being with me tonight. Love is the greatest of all, y'all. And it is so easy. Because all you have to do is just let God shine through you. They taught us in junior church, <laughs> back at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, they taught us that we know that we have passed from life, from death unto life <laughs> because we love the brethren. That's what we were taught as children. And it stuck with me all these days. Hallelujah. The old man John was right. If you love one another, it'll be enough. Hallelujah. God bless us tonight. God keep us. Make us perfect and every good work is my prayer. We'll be here again Sunday morning the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church here in Beaumont, Texas. And we'll be right here on Facebook Sunday morning at 8.30. Please join us. Thank you for being with us tonight. As we leave the air, God bless you. God keep you. Make us perfect and every good work.